Forests are full of surprises. In countless horror movies, people go to the forest to hide something which they don't want anyone to find out. At the same time, the absence of humans allows nature to take its course and produces some truly strange objects. Although there are many mysterious things found in forests across the world, we've managed to narrow them down to 15. The first nuclear reactor was rebuilt at this site in 1943 after here are the 15 most mysterious forest discoveries in the world. Giant Python Our first discovery takes us to Kalimantan in Indonesia and might make you never want to visit the forest again. If it was pouring down rain and you found a python on the ground, you probably would decide to call it a day and go home. But not this guy. By using a small steel pipe, he starts flipping the python over and over. He even starts taunting the snake. He eventually picks it up, and he does this by quickly grabbing it before the head and moving it away from him. This snake is the Burmese python, and it's found all over South and Southeast Asia. They're semi-aquatic, so they seek to live somewhere near a source of water. These snakes spend most of their life hidden in the trees. But as they get older, like this guy, they live on the ground. They're different from other snakes through their dark brown patches and two lines running horizontally across their face. Believe it or not, these snakes can also be found in Florida. Hurricane Andrew hit Florida in 1992, and some of these snakes managed to escape from zoos and snake breeding facilities. They're non-venomous, but obviously, it still hurts if they try to bite you. They also use their bodies as a rope to suffocate their victims. A fully grown python is usually 12 feet long, but these creatures have been known to grow up to 23 feet. So, if you're visiting Florida anytime soon, maybe stick to Disneyland for now. Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? Mysterious Postbox If you write a letter to this address in Germany, you'll be sending the postman out to the woods. And it's not a house out in the woods either. It's simply a tree with a postbox on it. Over a hundred years ago, a woman named Ort was in love with Schutfelsch. Both of their parents disapproved of their love, so they secretly wrote love letters to each other and placed it under this tree. Eventually, the parents approved and the couple got married under this tree. This story became so popular that so many people would randomly put letters under the trunk of the tree in the hopes that they could find their one true love. Eventually, the German postal department assigned it an address so you could post letters to it. More than 100 marriages are believed to have been brought about by the bridegroom's oak. Carl Heinz Martins, a retired postal worker, even met his wife through this method. The tree receives a thousand letters a year, most of which come during the summer. There's something so magical and romantic about it, Martins told the BBC. On the internet, facts and questions match people. But at the tree, it's a beautiful coincidence, like fate. So forget Tinder and get to this tree now. <laughs> Screaming Man If you're walking on your own in the woods, I'm sure the last thing you'll want to come across is a giant screaming head. But in the Kyder Forestry Plantation in England, this is what you'll find. This is the north of England and close to the border of Scotland. This is a giant timber head created by American artist collective A. Simparch. It was inspired by the Celtic gods of Britain who were usually just represented through their heads. You can also go inside the head where you can watch and listen to the forest through it. You walk inside and there's a stairwell you can climb to. So you climb up the stairs and look at the eyes, which are windows. The construction of the head was quite unique. 107 pieces of plywood were used in its construction, but its design wasn't drawn on a computer. Instead, they were drawn the old-fashioned way, on paper templates. It was designed to include imperfections as the human head contains imperfections. <laughs> Ghost Station From giant heads to abandoned railway stations, in the late 1800s, the Maplewood train station was built. From then on, and up until the 1930s, it was a popular train station for people visiting from Boston. Then the automobile became popular, and people simply stopped taking the train. So the train station became vacant, and rather than demolishing the station or converting it into something else, they just left it as is. It's essentially a ghost train station. The building is dilapidated, but there's currently work underway to restore it. This would involve turning it into more of a museum, 
and not back into a train station. A contractor is going to look at the building and assess how it was made. Then they'll take the entire train station apart and build it back up again, restoring it to its former glory. The building would then be used for tourism and community programs. The building has been abandoned since 1924, so almost a thousand years later, the locals are finally going to do something about it. Mm -hmm. World's largest money. Our next topic takes us to the Yap Islands in Micronesia. Micronesia is a group of islands in the Pacific Ocean, and it's about as remote as you can get. The people on this island are so remote that they even developed their own unique money system. Most people today pay by card, and the thought of carrying around bills and coins in your pockets can be a bit of a nuisance, but on this island, carrying their money is a bit more difficult. Their currency is these huge rocks. These stones are all over the place, outside hotels, on the beaches, and also in forests. Each village has a stone money bank where these stones are on display. At first, these rocks were used as gifts to one another. Then over time, you could trade them for something. Eventually, they began to form a strange type of currency. The stones were tied to an earlier money system on the island, which involved pearl shells. The chief then decided that 50 shells is equal to one stone. Today, the US dollar is used to pay for most things on the island, but for ancient customs on the island, sometimes they still use this currency. <laughs> Mirror People Rob Mulholland is a sculptor and environmental artist, but to say his sculptures are strange is a bit of an understatement. In some forests, you can see mirror people. These look like when people turn invisible in movies, where you can just see the outline of their shape. It looks like ghosts are wandering through the forest and gives it an incredibly creepy feel. On his website, he says, the six male and female figures represent a vestige, a faint trace of the past people and communities that once occupied and lived in this space. The figures absorb their environment, reflecting in the surface the daily changes of life in the forest. The sculptures bridge the gap between humanity and nature. As humans, we tend to view ourselves as separate from nature, whereas this sculpture shows humans blending into the natural landscape. He's from Scotland, and this is where his mirror people were first seen. Over time, these sculptors have become viral, and he's commissioned for work in Germany and Russia. Martini Junction. Our next stop takes us to the Needham Town Forest, which is just outside Boston. When walking through this forest, you'll find a railway. But it's not some abandoned railway station. This is a model railway system with trains running on them. There are 120 feet of track with random bits of scenery thrown in too. This was created in the early 2000s by Jim Metcalf, a retired railway engineer. He loved walking through the forest and there was a certain part of the woods which he liked to call Martini Junction. It was a nice spot where he and his wife could enjoy some martinis. While picnicking there one day, he decided that the spot was also good to host a model railway. He told Amusing Planet, My idea was to have the line start at the bench, loop around the waterfall, and make another loop after passing back through the bench complex. The railway is raised between one foot and four feet for most of its length, except for a small part of the bench loop which comes to grade. The bench over the track was converted to a tunnel with doors so that the locomotive and tender could be stored and locked. This railway through time has become iconic and some kids have even left their own toys around the track. Sadly, the railway will only be working when Metcalf is there. So if you're passing through this forest, have a look at it and see if Jim is at Martini Junction. <laughs> Buried Nuclear Reactor We now turn to Chicago, when something strange has been hidden in the woods. When walking through it, you'll see a huge sign with the words CAUTION, DO NOT DIG, written across it. So why should you not dig? The answer is because a nuclear reactor is buried underneath. In 1942, the University of Chicago created the first ever controlled nuclear chain reaction. Their first ever reactor, known as the Pio, provided a template for future nuclear reactors but was no longer useful. A year later, the reactor was taken to the Red Gate Woods where it was dismantled and covered with a radiation shield. Today, there are granite markers commemorating the site of Pio A. The site is open to the public so it presents no danger. Nonetheless, the park is owned by the Department of Energy, who will take control in the unlikely event of something getting out of hand. The parking lot of these woods is a picture of two people, Albert Einstein, whose theories helped develop nuclear energy, and the reactor's inventor, Enrico Fermi. <laughs> the Blue Pond 
Our next topic is over to one of Japan's many beautiful islands. On Hokkaido Island, there's a blue pond, but the name doesn't really give it justice, as almost all ponds are blue. It's the particularly surreal and strange shade of blue that makes this pond particularly magical. It also changes to a different shade of blue throughout the seasons, and even in some conditions, turns to a turquoise shade of green. The reason why it's a such a strange color is that it's an artificial lake. Nearby is a volcano on Mount Tokachi, so a dam was built on that mountain. Scientists still aren't 100% sure why it changes color. A likely theory is that the water is full of aluminum hydroxide, which is not very soluble, so is able to reflect the sunlight. The area is a popular tourist destination. It was open to tourists in 2010, and the word spread about this amazing place through photographer Kent Shiraishi, who won the 2011 National Geographic Edition photo competition. Apple also made it the preset background image of OS X Mountain Lion. Mystery Staircases One of the scariest things you can come across in a forest is an isolated staircase, a stairway that leads to nowhere. Why did it get there? A woman on TikTok recently went viral, warning that if you see a mysterious staircase in the woods, never walk up to it, no matter how tempted you may be. She said that the only people who have dared walk up these staircases feel nervous and nauseous when walking up. The user at Jesse V said, some people say the stairs lead to another dimension. Other people say it leads to hell. Others say that's why so many people and kids go missing in national forests, because they climb these stairs and they're never seen again. Although you shouldn't believe everything you see on TikTok, there's a strange history of stairways to nowhere in the woods with many urban myths that predate any TikTok hoaxes. There's a story about a stairway in the Philippines where a ranger climbed up the stairs and when he came back down realized it was five years later. One stairwell near Roswell gave off a weird frequency from aliens. Another in Sweden gave off a screaming noise when someone reached the top. Whatever's going on on these stairwells, they're probably best avoided. <laughs> Serbian Dentist Perhaps the strangest thing you could find in the woods is a Serbian dentist. Aleksandar Pirovatric, a 50-year-old Serbian dentist, was a renowned oral surgeon in the Czech Republic until one day everything changed. His mother died, then he lost his job. Because he wasn't a Czech citizen, he was asked to leave his state-owned apartment. He was made homeless but didn't want to be spotted by police and deported, so he decided to go live in the woods. But the Czechs are quite a friendly nation. So despite living in the woods, Peter Silva, a Czech professor, befriended him through noticing his strange behavior. Every day in Teplice, I was seeing a man with a backpack on his back in a thin dressing, hurriedly walking, Silva told the media. When I stopped him, he spoke perfect Czech, and then he said that he was a Serb. He did not look like an ordinary homeless person. He sounded very knowledgeable. Then I realized that he was a famous dentist or oral surgeon. Alexander said, I've been living in the woods for a long time. During the day, I would walk because there are soldiers here during the day, and I didn't want them to see me. I didn't know how they would react. So every day, I walked up to 20 kilometers. I ate food from containers, whatever I found, and what people gave me. But his fortune soon changed. His half-sister on his father's side wanted to claim her inheritance to their father's property. To do this, she tried to declare her brother was dead, but this request was denied. She soon sent an email to the Serbian embassy to help, and they agreed to bring him back to Belgrade. He left Belgrade in 1999 and returned 15 years later. Funnily enough, when he left Belgrade, it was part of Yugoslavia, and when he returned, it was part of Serbia. Scotland's Pyramid Egypt may be famous for its pyramids, but what about the Pyramid of Scotland? Yeah, that's right. The Scots have somehow managed to land their own pyramid. Scotland is famous for its amazing scenery and castles, but this pyramid-shaped structure really stands out. The pyramid is in the region of Scotland known as Balmoral, which gives us our first clue to how the pyramid got there. Balmoral Castle was owned by the British royal family, and when the Queen of England visits Scotland, this is where she stays, so the pyramid is tied to the royal family. There's an old tradition in Scotland of building cairns, which is a huge pile of rocks stacked on top of one another. Building these is a mark of respect, and this big pyramid-shaped cairn in the woods was built as a mark of respect for Queen Victoria and her family. It was specifically built to reflect Queen Victoria's love for her husband, Prince Albert. It was built after his death in 1861. The pyramid is 35 feet high with a base of 41 by 41 feet. Hmm. <laughs> Fugitive Cow 
Our next topic involves a missing cow in the woods. But this cow has not just wandered off from another field, this cow has escaped the slaughterhouse. Hermine the cow has become quite the celebrity in the Netherlands. He's also quite a star on social media, sparking hashtags such as Save Hermine, Me Co, and Co Hermine. The co escaped his fate as a future sirloin steak and made it for the woods. The cow has been a lot more clever than people have anticipated. He only comes out at night so he doesn't get spotted. As well as being a fun story, Hermine the cow raised some awkward truths about modern society. Most people were rooting for his escape, but also ate meat. As Emma Brown, who writes for the Dutch Review, explains, I for one am very happy that he may be saved. She certainly deserves it after the big escape. It certainly makes you think about the ethics regarding eating animals, which is hard for a lot of us when we're so blinded by how darn good meat tastes. <laughs> Butterfly Forest On the beautiful Greek island of Rhodes, there's the Valley of the Butterflies. During August, thousands of butterflies swarm into the valley to reproduce. The trees almost take a different color as they become covered in these beautiful butterflies. It's a big tourist attraction, but at the same time, the authorities are trying to preserve the natural beauty. It's prohibited to disturb the butterflies by clapping or whistling. One thing you need to know about moths is that they have no stomachs. This means they're unable to feed and survive on the fat deposits they store when they're caterpillars. Their migration begins during the month of May, which is just after the rainy season. They're attracted by the smell of oriental sweet gum trees and gradually travel along the waterways. They travel a dozen of kilometers until they eventually arrive. Then they attach themselves to the trees, the bushes, and all of the rich foliage in the area. They sleep on the shady side of the tree or near the roots. Daws heads. And lastly, we've got something particularly creepy to show you. One thing that really scares the living daylights out of visitors to the woods are the random daw heads. The daws are in Constitutional Lake Park in Atlanta. While the park is mainly a nature reserve, this trail of daws suddenly cropped up and is now one of the most popular or unpopular, depending on who you ask, aspects of the woods. The trail was designed by a local carpenter named Joel Slayton, who used discarded doll parts found at a nearby abandoned site. He also encourages members of the public to contribute their own pieces from discarded objects they found. So there are other pieces made from old bottles, old bricks, and truck parts. The woods are just outside of Atlanta and close to the busiest airport in the world so there's plenty of discarded objects to choose from. There's also some memorable quotes posted along the way. One says, Oh Captain, my Captain, which is a poem by Walt Whitman. Another quote is from Henry David Thoreau, which says, I took a walk in the woods and came out taller than the trees. But the most clever of all is a headless Superman doll with a sign beside it saying, I lost my head to social media. The trail is now public art built by the public, Slayton told CNN. The displays have changed a lot over time, mostly due to cherry picking and vandalism. Luckily, a lot has been preserved online. Nothing protects the trail but the goodwill of the people visiting it and the fact that it's a mile almost back in the woods. And that brings us to the end of this video. As always, thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to this channel. There are lots of exciting videos we're just putting some finishing touches on that we can't wait to show you. See you soon.